The X-Zone radio and TV show is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the X-Zone radio and TV show or in any manner endorsed by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, Talkstar Radio Network, its affiliated stations, or employees. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and you're listening to us live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send an email, exxon at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, you can always chat with me here in our studios by typing in talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our websites, www.exxonradio.com, xzonetv.com and xzoneipod.com. My guest this hour is L.A. Marzulli. He is the author of Politics, Prophecy, and the Paranormal. And his website, spiraloflife.com, and his blog site, lamarzulli.wordpress.com. And L.A., my friend, how are you tonight? I'm great, Rob. Thanks for having me back on. Sure appreciate it. Always great having you. So what is what has the, uh, the chatter been at your blog site this week? <laughs> Glad you asked. Um... These these headlines I'm going to read came are, are basically less than 24 hours old, and they're from different you know different publications okay. all around the globe. I'm just going to read you this because in politics, prophecy, and the supernatural, um, I, I spent a lot of time on the Ezekiel 38 prophecy. We've talked about this before. Sure have. I've never really gotten into it. I feel tonight maybe we should touch more on on the you know specificity of the prophecy. This is. And, and again, these headlines, I'm not making this stuff up. This, what, this is what I dug up for today. I'm just going to read the headlines. Iran rejects French warning it risks Israeli strike. Mm-hmm. Another headline. Russia may aid Iran to spite U.S. Another headline. Perez declares Israel's readiness for war with Iran. Another one. Hezbollah chief warns against Gaza strike. So, you know, you've got the, you've got the mix over there is simply this. You've got uh, this nation of Israel, which, uh, in my opinion, the fact that it's even there is a fulfillment of this ancient prophetic thread, which, you, which you, I'm constantly talking about on your show, which was written 2,500 years ago and came to fruition in 1948 when Israel finally became a nation. It was literally regathered from the four corners of the earth and set back into its ancient, ancient homeland. And now, of course, we see this prophecy of Ezekiel 38, which I believe is the next big thing on the map, and what's chilling about it is when you actually look at the prophecy and what it says, and I'm just going to read a little bit, Son of man, sent thy face against God, the land of Magog. And quickly, Magog is most, most biblical scholars look at that um, as, as the present state of Russia, okay? And say, and it goes on from there, and it says, uh, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with the shielded helmet, and it continues. The reason why, you know, I stopped there because I want to dwell on who Persia is, Ethiopia and Libya. Obviously, Persia is the modern state of Iran. And what's bizarre is that the first nation, of course, is Magog, which most people believe is is Russia, and the second nation is is Persia or Iran. And this is exactly, precisely what we see 
being set up on the world political stage right now. And so it begs the question, I mean, is this prophecy for our time? Are we seeing the stage being set for this prophecy to unfold? And in my opinion, we are. I mean, I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. just looking at what's shaping up, in my opinion, from where I sit and the news I'm able to, you know, able to gather, and when I weigh it up against the prophecy, uh, in my opinion, Ezekiel 38, 39 is, is about to break loose at any moment. Does All right, let's like let's month? take a let's take a two minute break here. When we come back, sure. let's take a deeper look into the into this prophecy. All right, Ellie. Ellie Marzulli is our special guest. His website is www.spiraloflife.com, and Ellie's blog is lamarzulli.wordpress.com. We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as we continue live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, right here on the Talk Star Radio Network. Don't go away. Bob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. dark flat land she rides on a pony she named wildfire with a whirlwind by her side on a cold Nebraska night They say she died one winter when there came a key. Ellie Marzulli is our special guest, spiraloflife.com and elliemarzulli.wordpress.com. All right, Ellie, let's take a deep look into this prophecy that you and I have been talking about oh, for the last, uh, last number of weeks and, yeah. and, how, and how it really affects us in today's... Um, global situation now the the events that you talked about at the be in the first uh, segment are undeniable these are real news headlines it, it's real-time stuff exactly that's right yeah right okay and so, so it's it, it, it's it, to me it, it's extremely alarming in other words look if these headlines didn't exist i'd have absolutely nothing to talk about and i would retract the book and you know, go go write, go back to writing novels or something, do something else more productive. Or you, could, or you be, could become a Bigfoot hunter. Yeah, I'm ready. Trust me. <laughs> Send me out, Rob. <laughs> Send me out. <laughs> Live from the field. It's the Ellie Marzulli Weekly Bigfoot Report, <laughs> and this week we're in Montana, out on the trail oh, of Bigfoot. Gosh. Wouldn't that be fun? Though? That would be oh really gosh. <laughs> Okay, but we digress. Yes. The, bo the bottom line is, look, if, if I'm a student of, of these ancient manuscripts. I yes. mean, I, I look, read the stuff. I read them over and again, over and over again. I look at different commentaries. I try to figure out, you know, what 
when this thing is going to happen. I think we can all agree that this war of Ezekiel 38, 39 has never happened. An interesting note where the prophet gets this, this one little detail, and I'm going to read this to you now, it's more of an in-depth thing. And you shall come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. This phrase is used like two or three times in that passage, in the latter days, which, of course, begs the question, how do we know what the latter days are? And which brings us back to Ezekiel 37, which talks about the regathering of Israel from the four corners of the earth, which we know happened because in A.D. 70, Titus came in, destroyed the temple, and killed over a million inhabitants, took the remainder of the, of the Jews, of the Israelis, and literally scattered them over the Roman Empire. And there they remain for almost 2,000 years until basically the modern age. At the turn of the 20th century, we see a spike after World War II and the horrors of the Holocaust. We see finally uh, Israel b being voted by the U.N., and by the way, Russia voted for them. Uh, by one vote, it passes, and it becomes the state of Israel. A case could be made, and I, I realize, Mr. with all due respect to Mr. Salas's book, which I have not read, but I have explored Psalm 83 independent of his research, and I would, I would say his research, you know, from what I know of it, seems to be, seems to be uh, with them a lot of erudition. I would just add that I believe Psalm 83, in fact, has already happened on the prophetic scale, and you could make a very strong case that the nations mentioned, uh, very specifically again in Psalm 83 which I have right in front of me. If, if you're interested, we can go into that yes, a little please, bit. Yes, yeah. Okay. For instance, like Egypt is, um, it talks about Hagar and Amalek. That is Egypt. Palestine, Pal the Palestinians are Philistia. Uh, Jordan is Edom. Uh, Lot, Moab, Hagar, and Ammon. Syria is Sisera. Lebanon is Tyre. And it goes on from there. Syria is the Arab people. And it, the, the bottom line is in 1967, uh, which is one of it, which is which is the Great War. I believe that Psalm 83 discusses all these nations specifically named in Psalm 83, and I just you know outline them very quickly, which can be confusing because it's just a bunch of names. But those modern equivalents, let's say, um, like the Palestinians are 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 correlated back to Philistia or Jordan is Edom and Lot and Moab. That in other words, the present nation of Jordan corresponds to the ancient boundaries of the ancient people known as the Edomites or Moabites, okay? So we see that those, those nations mentioned in Psalm 83 literally went up against Israel in 1967. Therefore, I believe that prophecy is fulfilled. What I find alarming uh, in, in that string of prophecy is, of course, Iran is never mentioned. And what's really bizarre is when you look at the Ezekiel 38 prophecy, we mentioned that right before the break, it discusses the nations... Um, which go up against Israel. And the first one, of course, is Magog, which I believe is Russia. Mm -hmm. And the second one is Persia, or known as Iran. And, and, and people who would look at that, well, you know, how, how do you know that that's the same nation? Very simply because when you talk to an expatriated uh, Iranian, they will normally or usually say, I'm from, I'm from the land of Persia. They, they usually don't use the word Iran. Iran is a very modern term, only used since the revolution, really, um, since the overthrow of the Shah, so uh, or, or or shortly before that, I should say. So it's it's basically in, in the latter part of the 20th century that Persia shifted its name and became Iran, but it's the same nation, it's the same geographic location. And 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 my point is this: right right when we came on after the break, if if these headlines weren't here, I'd have nothing to discuss. I wouldn't be looking at Ezekiel 38. But I mean, this is just today's headlines, and it's no, it's not just one, and it also talks about. You know, Russia is in there, uh, Israel is in there, Hezbollah in, in, in Lebanon, which, which again, you know, going back um, and, and looking at the land, it seems to be like, you know, the Lebanese and, and that whole part of um, in Syria may be, may be part of the fray here. So I find it incredibly alarming that we're looking at this, and it also pinpoints with great specificity it shall be in the latter days. Now, it doesn't give you a date on that, but we know that first Israel has been re uh, reestablished in its ancient homeland with its ancient boundaries. And we also know that, in my opinion, that Psalm 83, that prophecy, has been fulfilled in the, in the in War of 67. You can make a very strong case that that prophecy has been fulfilled in Israel 1. So the next thing on the prophetic scale is this great war of Ezekiel 38. And you would say, well, gee, you know, why, why should it be concerned? First of all, millions of people are going to perish in this thing especially if what the prophecy, and I believe it is true, 
comes to pass, they will use, the Israelis will use their nuclear capability. They will yes. be pushed mm -hmm. to the point where they'll have to use it. And this is why it's so alarming. This is why it's so alarming, because if, if, if they go nuclear at this point, uh, we're looking at millions of people dying. We're looking at something that, that's off the charts, off the scale. We, as, as a race of human beings on this planet, have never witnessed any, anything like this. This will cause a great climate of fear. I mean, fear that we've never known, uncertainty that we've never known. I think even beyond what we experienced in World War II, because people will say, oh, my gosh, are we looking at a thermonuclear war which is going to completely wipe out the planet? What are we really looking at here? And, and this, is, this is a leap, and this is certainly a scenario and a theory of mine, but I believe that this is the, this is the juncture. I could be dead wrong on this, Rob. I mean, I'm sticking my neck out. It, it's a theory, but it's based on, you know, 20 years of research. Mm -hmm. I believe that this climate of fear will be the trigger that, um, or, or the event, I should say, that then triggers the paranormal to manifest, and that being specifically the type of uh, craft that our friend Ricky Sorrells in, in uh, Texas saw, over a mile wide, and these things will, it won't be like the Phoenix Lights where they fly over, you know, in the, in the dead of night, and people see them, and there's, you know, witnesses that come on the record and all this. These things will park themselves over the major cities of the world and just sit there, and this will cause this unbelievable paradigm shift in consciousness, which, um, which again, ancient scriptures talk about this one world religious system, which last time I was on, we talked about this, which begs the question, how do you get all these people to to change their worldview or change their belief system. And I told have... you, and I told you how I would do it. <laughs> Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> Get everybody sloshed, have a good there time, you go. have a party. For Twenty-four and, and hours, it would work. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so it's interesting to see that that, in my opinion, things are shaping up. Mm -hmm. It looks like the stage is being set for this, and all we can do is is sit and wait and watch and. And uh, hopefully it won't happen, but it certainly looks like they're they're rushing towards it. So, uh, you know, I'm 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 monitoring this stuff daily now and uh, keeping a real close look at it. I know the last time you were on last week, you know, you talked about that there's going to be a strike on Iran, yes. you know, sooner than later. And that's uh, you know the Iranians must know that. So that again, are are they going to pull the you know pull the trigger first and go after Israel? I don't I don't know the way it comes down. I only know that. That these nations will come up against Israel, and they will more than likely resort to their uh, nuclear arsenal and, and uh, defend themselves that way. However, we can always hope that something will happen where a peaceful solution to this problem may may happen. You know, I, I would love to see that. So I, would, I. I mean, I would I would love I would love to think that I'm dwelling in a period of time where maybe this Ezekiel 38 39 prophecy won't happen and that we could see some sort of a peaceful resolution um, you know to to the to the vitriol and to the hatred that's over there but it, it just seems like they're they're hell-bent on leather you know to go for this thing I mean uh, the saber rattling of specifically of Nasrallah uh, the head of Hezbollah and of course our friend in Iran mm -hmm. uh, Ahmadinejad and, and the Russians have made it very clear that you know they're, they're not backing down if, if Iran is attacked you know by almost by proxy they're, they're going to back Iran so it, it, it really is playing into Ezekiel 38 and 39. But, um, you know, again, the prophecy is written 2,500 years ago. Uh, somebody, which begs the question, you know, what was he looking at? How did he know? How did he, was it a vision? Was it like a, like a movie playing out in front of him? Was he transported literally in, through time to the place where he saw this stuff? I don't know that. I have no idea. You know, he doesn't, the prophet doesn't make it clear how he sees it, but he sees it. I mean, he sees, apparently he gets a vision, which is why he's, he's at a loss of words to, do, to really describe what he's looking at. He only knows um, in, in other places and, and, and from other prophets it talks about, and this stuff is really bizarre when you get into it. I mean, it's just really bizarre. He talks about the plague. This is, this is what the, prop, the prophet says, the plague that will strike this army. I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, but plague is used. Um, will be as they're as they're just standing there, their eyes and their tongues will rot instantaneously as they're standing there. Which you know, when you when you when you discover what a neutron bond does, that's what it does. You know, it it, it boils your blood inside you. It doesn't. It's not like a like a Hiroshima or a Nagasaki, which just blows everything out. It's not that way. The radiation is so intense that your blood boils, and and your your eyes just rot and your tongue rots. Right, right as you're standing, which which you know fits the prophecy, which is 
Yeah. 2,500 years ago, no one knew about this stuff, and you had no way to describe it, and here it is very, very specific what what the plague is, what this thing is. L.A., stand by. Plague. We've got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. L.A. Marzulli's our guest, spiraloflife.com and LA, lamarzuli.wordpress.com. We'll be back after the news right here on the Talk Star Radio Network. When I first enrolled in the program, getting all the collection calls and letters, I would get overwhelmed. And a couple of times, I called panicky, and everyone at Financial Freedom just calmed me right down. Well, how would you like to wipe out 30 to 60% of your credit card debt? There are secret programs most credit card companies won't tell you about that can allow a portion of your debt to be forgiven. Financial Freedom of America can help you avoid bankruptcy, save thousands, and get more cash back in your pocket every month. Call for a free, no-obligation consultation. FFA will give you the steps to eliminating a large percentage of your credit card bills, medical bills, or department store debt. If you have over $10,000 in unsecured debt, you could automatically qualify. Individual results vary, and it's not available in all states. Call for your free information now at 800-401-9497. 800-401-9497. Don't miss out. Call now. 800-401-9497. That's 800-401-9497. Amethyst works with your guides, angels, and spirit animals to assist you in catalyzing your inner healer, clearing your psychic and spiritual debris, integrating your lost soul parts, illuminating your journey, energizing your spirit, opening your psychic senses, exercising your multidimensional gifts, activating your purpose, empowering your soul, validating your experiences, navigating life's transitions, guiding your process, awakening your spiritual essence, balancing your energies, tapping into the creative flow, realizing your dreams, visioning your destiny, dreaming your world into being, being who you really are. Amethyst is an Exxon iPod partner and can be visited online at www.answersfromyourangels.com or from your Exxon iPod by touching the Angels widget on the main screen. Amethyst, www.answersfromyourangels.com. Back in Victorian England, a famous theologian posed a perplexing riddle. Why are the two top personalities in the Bible tagged with the numbers 7 and 11? Academics agree the answer is found in the stunning discovery of a hitherto secret Bible structure explained in a new book called The Genesis Grid. The discovery is so simple that preschool children could illustrate it. Certain claims are hugely controversial and may offend some, but at the X-Zone, we've studied this awesome new book and agree with one expert, and I quote, These discoveries appear to be beyond coincidence. So who or what hid this wonderful pattern in the Bible, and what might they do next? Find out more, X-Zone Nation, and read reviews on www.genesisgrid.co.uk. That's www.genesisgrid.co.uk. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. My name is Michael Telstar, Canada's leading mentalist from Toronto, Ontario. Hi, my name is Bonza, and you're listening to my dad, Ron McConnell, on the XM. This is Psychic Dorothy from St. Catharines, and you're listening to Rob McConnell. 
Hello, my name is Holly Reeves, an astrologer from Astro for You, and you're listening to Canada's number one paranormal radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Welcome to The X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. Ellie Marzulli is our special guest. His website is www.spiraloflife.com and lamarzulli.wordpress.com. Uh, by the way, Exxon Nation, Cal Corf has been in touch with me, and he uh, proposed that him uh, and uh, Michael Horn from the Billy Meyer Society join us here on the Exxon to have a debate. I said no. Plain and simple, no. And I gave him the reason being that, you know, two hours before airtime on his last debate when he was supposed to um, debate Major Kevin Randall, or Dr. Kevin Randall, I should say, uh, he pulled out, citing a terrorist attack within seven days. Well, there was no terrorist attack. And uh, I just fully declined and... I wish him well if he's going to be taking his uh, his debate somewhere else. Good luck to him, but it will not happen here on the X Zone. Speaking of Michael Horn, he's going to be my guest tomorrow night in hour number three. Ellie Marzulli, welcome back, my good friend. We're talking about prophecies, and it certainly does look that the Bible, especially the Ezekiel prophecy, has the events of today dead on. And we have to ask ourselves where they did get this information. Now, what is your hypothesis on how this information was so accurate so many years ago? Well, you know, you and I, you and I have dabbled into this and, and touched on it on, on other shows, but I, I honestly believe that there is an entity, mm-hmm. uh, for, for lack, let's just call it that for, for the time being, that's really, that lives outside our space-time continuum, and that somehow uh, manifests through or can manifest at all points in time simultaneously if this entity wants to. And it chooses at, at some particular point, let's say, to hit the prophet Ezekiel, mm-hmm. and he chooses this man, and, and this man is either transported through time or sees through time or, or through a vision. Most of these things that Ezekiel gets are, are their visions. He's seeing a vision. Now, you know, I'm not there. I haven't talked to Ezekiel one-on-one. I'd love to. I'd love to be able to sit down and go, what does it look like? Does it, I mean, are your eyes wide open? Is it, are, you, are you in a meditative state? Mm-hmm. Are you completely you know, normal, let's say, as, as we would be normal, and all of a sudden something in front of you, kind of a vista opens up, a window opens up in space, and you see the future? I don't know how he saw this, but he did see it. And he penned this stuff over 2,500 years ago. Uh, I blogged today on, on the man. It, it's, it's like the average Joe, the man on the street, has no idea of what this stuff is talking, you know, is that this prophecy even exists. Most people have never read it, have no idea how it might be playing into what we're looking at in the Middle East today. And, and I believe that this entity is a very benevolent, good entity. Uh, my dealings with, with the entity <laughs> have, have, you know, been, uh, I would say, very, you know, very good and very benevolent. Um, and I think there's, you know, it, it, this, this opens up a whole can of worms we can get into maybe on other shows, but, but the bottom line is the reason why I believe, let's say, biblical prophecy over Nostradamus or, or prophecies, let's say, by the Hopi Indians is because of the great specificity of the prophecies and their accuracy. It's not like 60% or, you mm-hmm. know, 80% right or whatever. They're really 100% accurate all of the time. And so, you know, we're looking at the Ezekiel prophecy. It looks like it's shaping up. It looks like it's about to happen. Um, you know, is this like a week away, two weeks away? I don't know. I only know that it, it, it's more of these these uh, articles are crossing my desk daily. Uh, if frequency means anything, it looks like it's, it's happening with greater frequency than what it was, let's say, six months ago. Certainly, uh, a year ago, I mean, I, I, there, were, there, were, there were signs. There, was, there were um, rumblings. Uh, Rumblings, definitely rumors of war uh, in the area, but now it's like daily, you know, five, six, seven, even you know, ten articles, mm-hmm. whatever, on on what's happening, and and and, and everyone's jockeying for it for for position. The U.S. fleet is over there; they've just added three more aircraft carriers, and, and the Persian, 
in the Persian Gulf near the Straits of Hormuz. The Russians have a fleet. Um, the Russians and the, and the Iranians are in bed together. The Syrians now have uh, you know opened up a a, a channel with, with the Russians, and it's just a question of what you know how it comes to play. What's the trigger that sets this thing off? And that's what we're looking at. Ellie Marzulli is our guest, www.spiraloflife.com, and his blog is lamarzulli.wordpress.com. Ellie, the Armageddon, as described in the Bible right. towards right. the end times, um, right. is very specific as well. It is. It is. And this is, there, in my opinion, there, there are two separate wars here. And I realize that, you know, some, some biblical scholars place the Ezekiel 38, 39 war um, at the end of the thousand years of peace, and I don't. I, I just, I just, and, and many other scholars, uh, like myself, believe that this happens before Armageddon. Uh, the scenario that I believe we're, we're looking at is we'll see this, this Ezekiel 38, 39 war will happen. It will kick off supernatural events that are absolutely unprecedented. It will create this one world government with a one world religious system. And at the and it also it begins, in my opinion, the beginning of the seven year uh, tribulation, which the book of Revelation discusses and talks about. At the end of that is that battle of Armageddon, which all the nations, all the nations of the world are basically involved in on, on some level. So that's that's a whole different deal. In fact it says it says in the prophecy Unless those days were, sure. I mean, this is real sobering stuff. I mean, this is, it's it's not it's not the type of stuff you know you don't you don't tell your kids. You just you just don't talk about it. I mean, most adults can't handle this. But when when you when you read those words and it says that unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. That is an cr- incredibly sobering statement. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. So you see that that mankind is now. You know, left to its its monstrous self, and, it, and it's allowed just to just to run the full gamut of uh, of man's own depravity, which is what we're looking at. And then the entity intervenes and brings about peace, and that's what we're all waiting for. Because we read the end of the book, and we know that you know the good guys win, and that's what we're hoping for. That's the hope. That's the and hope. I think yeah. that will happen. Now, you you were talking about the Hopi Indians a few moments ago. Right. Where do they fit in, in into the entire uh, prophecy scenario? Like we've got the we've got the Mayan calendar that allegedly right. ends 2012, and there's a lot of people who are expecting doom and gloom. Well, the Hopi Indians have some interesting prophecies. They talk about spider webs in the sky, for instance, mm-hmm. and and some people look at that and say, well, you know, with the with the contrails and, yeah. and you know, is, is that a fulfillment of that? They also talk about a house falling from the sky, a man-made house from the sky. Again, this guy, some guy's looking at something in the future, and he sees it, and he has no idea how to describe this thing. He just uses the language that he that he's familiar with, the vernacular, the you know, the syntax that he has it readily available. And the Hopi prophecy is that there's a house, you know, above in the sky, and this thing falls. Is it the space station? It, it certainly could be. That hasn't happened yet. But that's you know there's look there's a lot of prophecies in, throughout throughout time and through different parts and people mm-hmm. look at you know Nostradamus for instance they're always talking about him Saint Malachi is certainly another one talking about the chronology of the popes and we're down to the third from the last pope according to Malachi and and I look at these things and I travel on them but what the difference between those and what is what is the I mean it, the Bible prophecy in my opinion is just heads and shoulders above everything else in the sense that you've got it's not only one prophet, it's, it's many prophets, and there's no collusion between them. In other words, Ezekiel necessarily didn't know what Isaiah was talking about, you know, and, and sometimes they're separated by a couple hundred years. So there's no collusion between these, these prophets, and yet they're all adding on to this thread of prophecy which goes through the millennia up right up to our present day. Uh, we talked about before the break, if... If, let's, if, if, if you can make a case that the Psalm 83, the prophecy of those nations going up against Israel, has been fulfilled in the 67 war, I mean, that's amazing. We also know that the temple, the third temple, will be rebuilt. There was an article that came across my desk today talking about, once again, that third temple, that the Israelis are in negotiations trying to get that temple built. And it's just, you know, the guy who cuts that deal, the, the figure who, who allows that to happen, there will be some... You know, one person will bring it about type of a thing. Like, you know, Ronald Reagan is looked at as, as bringing down 
um, the Soviet Union, let's say. I mean, he's he's the guy that did it. You would pin it on his chest and say, you know, Ronnie, you mm -hmm. know, you won, and then Gorbachev with Glasnost and Perestroika and all that, and the Soviet Union just kind of fell of its own weight and dismantled. Well, I think the person that that brokers the deal for the Israelis to build that third temple, and the, and the, the scripture is very very clear on this, will be none other than the Antichrist. So we're around and we see. It doesn't matter who it is. Whoever brokers that deal is, according to the Bible prophecy, the Antichrist. He's the guy that does it. So, you know, if we're around at that time, I mean, I'll be, I'll be blogging on that like crazy. And uh, but see, most people don't know this stuff, Rob. Most people have never read it or even know where to look to read it. And they just, you know, it, it, many people have a Bible that sits on their shelf or underneath their coffee table, and they never crack it open. And it's, you know, my my uh, exhortation to your listeners would be. You know, let's not talk religion here. Just open up Ezekiel 38 and read it for yourself in any translation you want. I don't care. It's very, very specific, and it talks about, um, you know, in the latter days these things will happen. Mm -hmm. Here's a group of nations which will come up against a land of unwalled villages. There's another line which in itself was, was completely unheard of in the ancient world. I mean, I mean, in the ancient world you just didn't have a land of unwalled villages. You had a series of castles and moats and high walls and that's what you did. I mean, otherwise you'd be, you know, your crops would be taken, you'd rape and pillage, and you'd lose everything. And and this was this was what the ancient world was. And to, the prophet writes this: a land of unwalled villages, absolutely unprecedented in the ancient world. But the prophet seeing this, and that's how he writes it. You know, it's a no big in, deal. In other books, in other uh, religious books, or in other uh, philosophical books around the world, mm -hmm. is there any commonality? That can be drawn to the uh, to the prophecies of Ezekiel. Well, I would say no. The um, there's there's some interesting uh, prophecies which I kind of touch on a little bit in politics, prophecy, and the supernatural. That the the Shia sect of Islam, and I know your your next guest is going to talk about this, and this is going to be very interesting. They are awaiting the Iman Mahdi, uh, which which you know some some biblical scholars look at is uh, perhaps the Antichrist. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows who this guy is going to be? I mean, they've got their own eschatology, and it's completely different. Uh, it, it appears different from ours, but what actually, if you, if you know ours, if you know, if you know, let's say, the, the Judeo-Christian biblical overview of, of eschatology or prophecy of how these things happen at the end times, and you're familiar with the, the advent of the Mahdi and the Shia belief of total chaos, the two go very, they fit very well. They dovetail very neatly together, uh, and they fit very well, except that um, it's not what, with all due respect, it's not what the Muslims think. I think, I think they're, they're going to be deceived. But that remains to be seen, doesn't it? It certainly does. It yeah. certainly does. Yeah. And, if, and if things are happening the way that you believe they are, it's not going to be that long. I don't think so. I mean, you know, some of the intel I, I was just reading at the break, I was opening up some emails I haven't gotten to, and, and one of them talked about uh, uh, some sort of a nuclear exchange around the, the 15th or 17th of this month mm -hmm. in the Middle East specifically. So, you know, whether that's true or not and whether information is, is it, you know, apparently it was a leak from Dutch Intel or something. But, you know, it's, it's all Internet stuff, so who knows, you know, where, where it's really, you know, the source, and, and I, I can't track it to... I mean, I can track it some way, but not you know. So, not, not, so what I do you think? So, what do you think happens after the the Great Tribulation? What do you think happens after the war? What happens to the planet? What happens to the survivors of that that are left in this war torn I think, planet? I think it's a thousand year cleanup. I mean, I really do. I think that that you know, when this thing hits, and when you start looking at the the the, the, the state that the planet is literally left in. Mm -hmm. where a third of the water and a third of the land and the trees and all this stuff and the animals and just things are just, you know, people dying of plagues. and It's just it's a real mess. I mean, it's just a real mess. And I think that part of this thing will be to restore it and to kind of dismantle um, this, the craziness. Look, it, it, unless you go in your, in your if, unless you live in a really modern city, let's say like, like Beijing, what we were shown, and just all the, all the amazing buildings and like, you know, the water cube and and, and the bird's nest and all. Mm -hmm. I mean, ar ar architectural marvels. I mean, just amazing. You know, that's wonderful. But then you look at Detroit. <laughs> you get the picture? Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, not, it's not a nice place to live, you know, and, it, and it's really a, a modern hellhole with all due respect to people who live there. There are certain sections of it that you just don't want to be in. But you're you going to find that in every city. You're, you're going to find that in every city. And that's why I think that 
that it's going to be a dismantling of the system that we see today. And, you know, is, is it some sort of a, an ecotopia? There was a book out 20, 30 years ago called Ecotopia. And it, and it talked about, you know, almost like a, a First Nations people, the way they lived in harmony. Many of the tribes lived in harmony with, with nature. And I think in some ways, and I'm, look, I'm way out on a limb here. I'm just speculating. In some ways, I think that that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a return to a real balance and a real, um, it's, it's just going to be different. You know, for instance, let's say the animal kingdom, um, which there's, there seems to be some sort of a barrier between us uh, interacting with the animal kingdom. Yeah, we have dogs. They're our best friends, right? And we, we can, you know, every now and then we get to hang with the dolphins or whatever. Sure. But what if, what if everything was, what if things changed? What if somehow, supernaturally, um, you know, Deus ex machina, you know, God, God of the machine type of thing. But what if, because he's all powerful, what if that barrier is broken down and all of a sudden, like, you know, like instead of, you know, we can look at elephants and stuff, but what if it was all the animals? You know, and the Bible kind of hints at that, that a child will put his hand down the hole of an ass, which is a very deadly snake, and, you know, you get bitten by an ass, you're dead like in an hour. So, you know, for a child to do that, you know, the lion will lay down with the lamb. It speaks, it, it gives us a hint of perhaps that the whole animal kingdom or, will come back to the way it used to be. Or it's a metaphor of the lamb laying down with the lion being the one country that is very gentle laying down in harmony with one great power. It could, it could be both. Let's talk more on the other side of this yeah, break as the Exxon continues right here live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network. If you've ever wondered about past lives or even life between lives, and you think the whole idea is a little strange, you're not alone. Dr. Georgina Cannon, author of the books Return, Past Life Regression, and You, and her latest book, Discovering the Interlife, writes her books to remove the woo-woo from these regression protocols and to show the therapeutic benefit and opportunities that happen with these journeys. Discovering the Interlife is the one book you'll need as you continue on your life journey. As Shirley MacLaine said about the book, This is a very, very powerful work. So be kind to yourself and find out more about Discovering the Interlife at www.lifebetweenlivescanada.com. That's www.lifebetweenlivescanada.com. You'll be glad you did. To contact Dr. Georgina Cannon at the Ontario Hypnosis Center in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, visit www.ontariohypnosiscenter.com. What's new? What's a cat? Whoa! The cat is finally out of the bag. Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed. This is the no copycat book that gives you the X Factor in personable insight and experience to understanding cat behavior and solving problems from the cat's point of view. Learn the secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed by Carolyn Bartz that will take the relationship with your cat up a notch and to the next level. Discover why cat owners live longer, healthier lives. Medical facts revealed and why your cat can't help it. Digital photos to guide you in cat care. Safety tips. Tips, historical and myth gems, and a fun and lightning quiz. The perfect gift for smart cat owners and cat lovers. If you love your cat, take the journey now. Don't wait. To order your copy of Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed, visit www.secretsofcatattituderevealed.com. Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed, the perfect gift for smart cat owners and cat lovers. Have you exhausted all traditional means of healing without success? Are you experiencing communications through ghosts, angels, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services to humanity at this time through consultations. These consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you desire clarity of what may appear to be unexplainable phenomenon, then contact me through my website at a guiding light spelled L I T E dot com to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter.
Kelly Marzulli is our special guest, www.spiraloflife.com, and his blog is lamarzulli.wordpress.com. Yeah, so let's take a look at these prophecies in a different light, Ellie. Here you had people who had a very limited knowledge about the world around them. They were not very, they were not very scholarly people. Mm-hmm. However, they did have a way with words. And when you talked about the lamb lying with the uh, the lion, right. could have this could a lot of these prophecies simply be metaphors? Well, that one that one certainly could be. Um, but again, in order to really you know check that out, one has to read a paragraph ahead of it and see if if the text is actually you know metaphorical. In, in its content, or is it really being specific? I mean, there are, you know, the Bible is certainly filled with metaphor. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it's not. Um, it seems like, what, in my opinion, in my interpretation of it, it seems like what it's talking about is some sort of a, um, a lifting of the animal kingdom uh, between the animal kingdom, between, you know, it actually interspecies, let's say lion and lamb, and also between, you know, mankind and the animal kingdom. Uh, which would just be amazing. I mean, if you go back to the the mythos of, of let's say Genesis, which of course I believe is true, and and the animals are being created, and Adam is sent, and you know, name these people. I mean, it seems like he's he's in total harmony with these guys. That everything everything's working. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. But you know, and when we look back in time, we're talking about when the animals were created. What what was man? How was he? What was his point of evolution? We're, we weren't even walking upright. Well, you know, here's here's something interesting to think about, and I've I've I've, I've hit evolutionist with this, and and, and it's a bizarre idea, but it, it's bear with me for a second. Sure. When when Jesus does the miracle of the loaves and fishes, right, and he multiplies the fish, mm-hmm. the fish have age. Okay, the fish have age. He creates them from nothing somehow. And we don't know what he's what he's working. To us, it's utterly miraculous. You know, he's obviously ma- you know manipulating matter and creating fish. The fish have age. They're not minnows. They have age, which means the fish show up, but you know, ten years old, five years old, whatever. They have age to them, which um, you know kind of begs the question: uh, when he's creating, let's say, or when these animals are created, is it is it the same type of a thing? Is it just like you know, one minute they're there, and he's he's got the DNA, right? Because we know everything works off the DNA. Mm-hmm. When Darwin wrote his theory of evolution, didn't know about DNA. Had no idea even existed. I honestly believe if Darwin were alive today, reworking his theory and knew about DNA, he would rework that puppy big time because it doesn't make any sense. You know, because these the DNA is so precise, so precise and so infinitely detailed that you know you can't. Yeah, you can mix the DNA of, let's say, a firefly with a frog, and you get a frog that glows in the dark. I mean, there's there's geneticists I've literally talked to, and that's the kind of stuff that they yeah. do, messing with the spiral of life, messing with the deoxyribonucleic double helix, which we call DNA. But that code is there. We've got to say so long for tonight, L.A., because we've oh. run right out of time. You and I will be back talking next week. So until then, my good friend, Bob. take care of yourself. Take care. God bless. And we'll Bye-bye. speak to you soon. When we come back on the other side of the news at the top of the hour...